think it's just not setting any boundaries and leaving things open to wherever they may go, whether it's something that may be a pop song, which might not be considered progressive, but it could be followed by a death metal riff or, you know, any anything that you choose. And there's no there's no set boundaries. I guess I kind of see it as pushing the musical territory to somewhere that it hasn't been before. Usually, if we think something sounds good or sounds interesting or intrigues us in some sort of way, then we're more than likely going to use it, whether it falls into the category of, you know, metal or this or that. As long as it uh, piques our interest, then we're willing to use it. I've been a progressive fan since I was like 15, so I think it just kind of comes out in a lot of the music that I write. Kind of grew up with Rush and Genesis and stuff like that. Later on, kind of found out more about the King Crimson element of things, the, the weirder side of Prague. There's still traces of that in what I write because it's, you know, it's, I listen to, you know, progressive things, whether it's progressive R&B or things that I consider progressive R&B or progressive rock or progressive pop. It definitely finds its way into the music. I feel like that, that'd be me making expectations of myself if I were to like write for progressive music or write for a certain thing. You know, we were younger, we were crazy little metalheads. That was kind of what uh, the earlier stuff was very focused on, you know, just being heavy as much as possible. And now as we're older, we're bigger fans of uh, songwriting and the metal hasn't completely disappeared, but it's kind of used that where it's necessary. And For me, I think the older I get, the, the more my mind hones in on more of a focused approach with music as when you're younger, you know, you, you're introduced to all these new things and everything's exciting and you're just trying to pull from everything. Whereas now that I'm getting older, I'm starting to focus on more of the things that really, you know, have lasted throughout the years and still intrigue me over time. That's why I feel like a lot of bands, their songwriting tends to, to become slightly more simplified as they get older. And it always, whenever you hear the term like a band's matured, it tends to be that's what the focus was more on songwriting and smoother transitions and, you know, making everything feel like it's moving very smoothly. For me, it's, part, it's partially a physical thing. Like, you know, I can't be 45 screaming at the top of my lungs, you know. And, you know, it's, it's nice to sit down and, and vibe out you know, as you get older, instead of just always just being like, go, 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 like with the aggressive metal stuff. But yeah, I think, I think it's life and life, you know, the older you get, the more you start to, to weed out all the distractions and all the other things that don't necessarily need to be there. And we kind of do the same thing with the music. I can't necessarily say that a progressive band's connection with their fan base is any stronger than any form of music because I feel like music in itself just draws people together in some fashion, whether it be to a venue or, you know, just in a certain train of thought type way. I think there's the one common thing that everybody knows when you go to a progressive show is that sort of a higher appreciation for music in hearing something different and hearing people try new things. And I've always enjoyed that. I like the, the challenge of having to have somebody sit down and you know be entertained for an hour to an hour and a half. It's also a little bit of thought that goes into the set list and how the, the whole show as a, as a whole will flow. The attempt that we make is to not let the trance be broken throughout the whole performance. Never let there be silence and never give the crowd an opportunity to clap. Uh, until the very end. What's up, freaks? That was The Contortionist, and you're watching Into the Machine. Down below, we've got a link where you can buy their latest album, Language. Be sure and tune in next week because we're coming back at you with the final episode of Into the Machine with none other than keyboard wizard Jordan Rudis. We caught up with Dream Theater while they were on tour for their new album, The Astonishing, in Europe. Be sure and check it out. It's going to be a special one. See you then.